Hey hey, Marcus House with you here and today I want to explore with you the amazing SpaceX milestones that we can currently expect to see in 2019. Let's all not forget of course, SpaceX has had an amazing 2018. They completed 21 missions flawlessly, well flawless if you don't count whatever bizarre mystery surrounded the Zuma mission in January 2018. And that one Falcon Heavy Central Booster that went missing on us. Oh, oh, and of course, the spectacular grid fin failure in December 2018, where Elon educated us all around the importance of having some more redundancy around the landing systems of the Falcon 9. I mean, just take a look at this amazing thing. That wasn't flying. That was falling with style. None of these issues caused any sort of mission failure, and as far as I'm concerned, SpaceX remains the most exciting launch provider to grace the stage in this new space race. These failed landing attempts are just extra gravy to add to the excitement, and let's just remember that landing an orbital class rocket booster was totally unheard of just a few years ago. Now what else happened in 2018? Oh yeah, SpaceX did send Elon's own freaking Tesla Roadster into space on Falcon Heavy's maiden flight and re-landed two boosters simultaneously. So 21 missions in 2018, that's up from 18 launches in 2017. It's almost become routine now, hasn't it? So what can we look forward to in 2019? Let's explore. Recent news of course has all been around the unveiling of the nine NASA astronauts who have been assigned to the test flights of SpaceX's Crew Dragon and Boeing Starliner. Both of these commercial vehicles are designed to carry astronauts up to the International Space Station. Now since the Space Shuttle's retirement in 2011, that job has been done by Russian rockets launching from Kazakhstan in Soyuz capsules. Now this year, however, will be unique. It will be the first year that we will see private companies send crew into space. That of course is assuming successful test missions prior to that. Now Elon Musk recently said that SpaceX is about one month away from launching the first Crew Dragon spacecraft on an unpiloted test flight to the International Space Station, or ISS. This will be the first demo flight of the new Crew Dragon vehicle, and based on the success of this mission, we will likely see a fully crewed mission later in the year. We do need to keep in mind though, that a new vehicle such as the Crew Dragon requires a great deal of testing to be crew rated. SpaceX doesn't sugarcoat this fact either, with Elon tweeting that the early flights of the Crew Dragon will be extremely intense. Early flights are especially dangerous as there's a lot of new hardware involved. And the team at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida recently rolled the Falcon 9 rocket and Crew Dragon spacecraft to Pad 39A on Thursday, January 3rd. Then they hydraulically lifted the launch of Vertical for a series of fit checks at the Seaside Launch Facility, which was of course the same facility previously used to launch the Saturn V moon rockets and space shuttles. Some very cool extra images have also shown us that the brand new crew access arm is ready for action. This is super exciting and it's unlike anything we've really ever seen before. Sadly, the recent government shutdown in the US does add a few question marks to the time frames of these upcoming missions. The National Aeronautics and Space Administration, or NASA, has been severely impacted by the shutdown since it began and has been running at a super low capacity, just enough apparently to keep critical systems operational and astronauts alive. So while NASA is more or less at a standstill, their involvement in preparation of Crew Dragon's first demonstration is going to be minimal. Let's hope these issues are quickly sorted out and we can again look forward to having a launch date for Crew Dragon announced. Now regardless of the current schedule, progress does need to be made soon because NASA currently relies entirely on launch contracts from the Russian space agency Roscosmos to deliver NASA astronauts to the ISS. Now those contracts are set to end in a fairly permanent manner by the end of 2019, so best of luck to both SpaceX and Boeing completing these milestones later in the year. With the massive amount of attention recently around the mysterious and shiny Starhopper, you would probably have been living under an asteroid to have not heard something about this project. 
From the initial speculation to the extremely rapid development of the new test vehicle, SpaceX has taken major steps towards completing the first Starhopper prototype just a few weeks ago. Now along the way we've seen many images showing us the sections of the vessel coming together. Then in what seemed like almost no time at all, we can now see all the segments together in this beautiful prototype vehicle. Now this is a real image of the Starhopper as well, not the previous mock-up renderings. I mean how awesome is this? There will of course be additional work done on the vessel such as many of the internal systems. Not to mention we're going to see some suspension on these landing legs as Tim Dodd the everyday astronaut speculated after the release of these earlier photos. And with the massive rocket prototype now nearing finalization, Elon appears to be targeting the first test to kick off in February or March. And although Elon's timeframes can be a little hit and miss, given the general doubling I find of Elon's time estimates, we should see some very interesting tests going on early this year. Now, as always, SpaceX remains extremely ambitious in its goals. But what is Starhopper's end goal? Is it to test orbital re-entry? To simulate the infamous belly flop descent that we've seen in the simulations? Well, heck no. The Starhopper will be a test bed to try out some of the technology that will be built into the second stage of the real Starship, as well as to complete a range of vertical flight tests very similar to the Falcon 9 Grasshopper. Now, as stated, this vessel is for suborbital vertical takeoff and landing tests only. The orbital version will be taller, have thicker skin, and a smoothly curving nose section. Now just to clarify terminology here, the BFR, or the Big Falcon rocket, was recently renamed to the Starship. I know that's causing a lot of confusion. We can see here Elon tweeting that the spaceship upper stage will be known as Starship, and the Super Heavy will be the rocket booster needed to escape Earth's deep gravity well. As always with images of rockets, it is hard to get a real idea of scale when seeing photos at a distance like this. Now this Falcon 9 image here gives you a pretty good idea just how large this Falcon 9 rocket is. Well, the scale of the Starhopper may shock you as we're entering another level in craziness. Now check out these amazing 3D renderings here by Kimi Talviti. Hopefully I pronounced that correctly. Uh, this represents an approximation of how SpaceX's finished Starhopper and Starship could look based on reference images from the construction and other information. Now the Starhopper there is on the left compared with the full-sized Starship, then the Super Heavy booster, followed by the seemingly skinny Falcon 9. And this is starting to get real now, isn't it? You'll notice that the Hopper's first prototype here has just three Raptor engines. Now Elon has given us a little information on the engines here, saying that these are a blend of Raptor development and operational parts. And apparently, the first Hopper engine to be fired is almost finished and should be ready to fire in February. Now we are heading a little more into speculation here, but based on SpaceX's FCC applications, the test hopper may be cleared to fly as high as 5,000 meters in altitude. Now this will allow many tests to be conducted with the Starhopper, and further future tests such as for re-entry and aerodynamic controls will likely be done with a very different test vehicle. Let's not forget of course about Elon's tweet last year telling us about the potential SpaceX tech tree upgrade that could allow a Falcon 9 second stage to be upgraded to be like a mini ship. Now this could very well allow all the needed testing to be done for the much higher velocity re-entry profiles as well as the cooling of the stainless steel body. We want to hear more about this of course and I suspect we're going to get some news here soon after some successful Starhopper tests. I think it goes without saying that we are all watching this space very closely. It has been almost a year now since we watched Starman launch on the maiden flight of the Falcon Heavy. We had awaited the next exciting Falcon Heavy launch later in 2018, which sadly never came. Entering this year, we have the upcoming Falcon Heavy Block 5 launch for Arabsat 6A within the first half of the year. On top of this, we've also had reaffirmed by Taiwan's National Space Organization a quarter two launch target for SpaceX's third Falcon Heavy mission, which is a US Air Force sponsored test launch opportunity known as Space Test Program 2. 
This payload encompasses around 24 customer spacecraft. One of the largest and most significant customers riding on this vehicle will be Formasat 7. Now, Formasat 7 is a six satellite Earth sensing constellation built with the cooperation of Taiwan's NSO and the United States National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. If this Falcon Heavy is successfully launched, that will probably mean we'll see two Falcon Heavy Block 5s taking off by mid-year. Now that is exciting. Interestingly, the awesome fact that Falcon Heavy's next two launches are roughly scheduled within a month or two of each other may well wipe out the possibility that the second mission will use brand new side and central boosters. Now, due to this, it's going to be super important for the first Falcon Heavy launch of the year to successfully land all three of those Falcon Heavy boosters for rapid reuse for whichever mission ends up flying second. Now, what do you think? Are we likely to see brand new boosters shipping out for the second Falcon Heavy flight, or do you think it's more likely these will be reflown from the first mission? Let me know what you think in the comments below. The SpaceX fairing capture boat Mr. Steven came extremely close to catching a test dropped payload fairing right out of the sky during a recent helicopter drop test. Now, the fairing splashed down in the ocean right next to Mr. Steven. Now, I'm not sure if close really cuts it here as the fairing parafoil looks pretty much like it was snagged here on the way down. I mean, the net that's being used here on Mr. Steven got a massive size upgrade last year, and this is actually around four times as large as the one originally used. SpaceX have had a great deal of trouble catching this elusive fairing, but with the extra reach here, it definitely looks like SpaceX are now getting extremely close. Now the question you may ask is why this is important. I mean, at a glance, this is just a shell-like structure, right? It's, is it really worth the effort? I mean, SpaceX lets the entire second stage burn up on re-entry, so what does this little nose cone matter in regards to overall launch costs? Well, I'm glad you asked because once again, size can be very deceiving. Here is a shot of the two fairing halves with Elon's Tesla Roadster in between. Whoa, I mean, it sure is a lot bigger than it looks. As Elon has stated in the past, the fairing is a $6 million part, which is around one-tenth of the SpaceX's total rocket launch costs. If SpaceX can reduce or eliminate that by reusing fairings as often as possible, that's a big cost savings factor and another key ingredient in SpaceX's overall plan to reduce launch costs. So we have our fingers crossed for you, SpaceX. I'm sure it's not going to be much longer before we see that elusive fairing captured. And I certainly believe it'll be within the next few months and certainly this year. So I hope you enjoyed that video. If you're new to my channel, you may be interested in a number of simulations I've made here of the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy. I've certainly had a lot of fun making some of these wild landing attempts, and I'd love to know what you think about those. We also have a growing group of like-minded space enthusiasts on my Discord channel. There's a link to that in the description. If you have any questions for me, don't hesitate to shoot them down to me in the comments below. If this video has earned your subscription, a huge welcome to the channel. And for my existing subscribers, a massive thank you for your awesome continued support. I could not do this without you guys. Thank you, thank you. In the tile in the bottom left today, we have my Falcon Heavy mission to the moon. Please do give it a watch. In the top right is my latest video. And in the bottom right, a video that YouTube has selected from my channel just for you. Thank you for watching and we'll see you all in the next video.